9월 22일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경 통독 오늘 말씀은 사무엘하 18장 고린도 후서 11장 에스겔 25장 10편 73편 말씀입니다. September 22nd 2nd Samuel 18 David brought together the men with him. He appointed commanders of thousands over some of them. He appointed commanders of hundreds over the others. Then David sent out his troops in military groups. One group was under the command of Joab. Another was under Joab's brother Abishai, the son of Zeruiah. The last was under Ittai, the Gittite. The king told the troops, You can be sure that I myself will march out with you. But the men said, You must not march out. If we are forced to run away, our enemies won't care about us. Even if half of us die, they won't care. But you are worth ten thousand of us. So it would be better for you to stay here in the city. Then you can send us help if we need it. The king said, I'll do what you think is best. So the king stood beside the city gate. His whole army marched out in groups of hundreds and groups of thousands. The king gave an order to Joab, Abishai and Ittai. He commanded them, Be gentle with the young man Absalom. Do it for me. All the troops heard the king give the commanders that order about Absalom. David's army marched out of the city to fight against Israel. The battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. There David's men won the battle over Israel's army. A huge number of men were wounded or killed that day. The total number was 20,000. The fighting spread out over the whole countryside. But more men were killed in the forest that day than out in the open. Absalom happened to come across some of David's men. He was riding his mule. The mule went under the thick branches of a large oak tree. Absalom's hair got caught in the tree. He was left hanging in the air. The mule he was riding kept on going. One of David's men saw what had happened. He told Joab, I just saw Absalom hanging in an oak tree. Joab said to the man, What? You saw him? Why didn't you strike him down right there? Then I would have had to give you four ounces of silver and a soldier's belt. But the man replied, I wouldn't do anything to hurt the king's son. I wouldn't do it even for twenty-five pounds of silver. We heard the king's command to you and Abishai and Ittai. He said, Be careful not to hurt the young man Absalom. Do it for me. Suppose I had put my life in danger by killing him. The king would have found out about it. Nothing is hidden from him. And you wouldn't have stood up for me. Joab said, I'm not going to waste any more time on you. So he got three javelins. Then he went over and plunged them into Absalom's heart. He did it while Absalom was still hanging there alive in the oak tree. Ten of the men carrying Joab's armor surrounded Absalom. They struck him and killed him. Then Joab blew his trumpet. He ordered his troops to stop chasing Israel's army. Joab's men threw Absalom into a big pit in the forest. They covered him with a large pile of rocks. While all of that was going on, all the Israelites ran back to their homes. Earlier in his life Absalom had set up a pillar in the king's valley. He had put it up as a monument to himself. He thought, I don't have a son to carry on the memory of my name. So he named the pillar after himself. It is still called Absalom's monument to this day. Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said to Joab, Let me run and take the news to the king. Let me tell him that the Lord has shown that David is in the right. The Lord has done this by saving David from his enemies. I don't want you to take the news to the king today, Joab told him. You can do it some other time. But you must not do it today, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to a man from Cush. Go, tell the king what you have seen. The man bowed down in front of Joab. 
Then he ran off. Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, spoke again to Joab. He said, I don't care what happens to me. Please let me run behind the man from Cush. But Joab replied, My son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you a reward. He said, I don't care what happens. I want to run. So Joab said, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran across the plain of the Jordan River. As he ran, he passed the man from Cush. David was sitting in the area between the inner and outer gates of the city. The man on guard duty went up to the roof over the entrance of the gate by the wall. As he looked out, he saw someone running alone. The guard called out to the king and reported it. The king said, if the runner is alone, he must be bringing good news. The runner came closer and closer. Then the man on guard duty saw another runner. He called out to the man guarding the gate. He said, look. There's another man running alone. The king said, he must be bringing good news too. The man on guard duty said, I can see that the first one runs like Ahimaaz. The son of Zadok. He's a good man, the king said. He's bringing good news. Then Ahimaaz called out to the king, everything's all right. He bowed down in front of the king with his face toward the ground. He said, you are my king and master. Give praise to the Lord your God. He has handed over to you those who lifted their hands to kill you. The king asked, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimaaz answered, I saw total disorder. I saw it just as Joab was about to send the king's servant and me to you. But I don't know what it was all about, the king said, Stand over there and wait. So he stepped over to one side and stood there. Then the man from Cush arrived. He said, You are my king and master. I'm bringing you some good news. The Lord has shown that you are in the right. He has done this by rescuing you today from all those trying to kill you. The king asked the man from Cush, Is the young man Absalom safe? The man replied, King David, may your enemies be like that young man. May all those who rise up to harm you be like him. The king was very upset. He went up to the room over the entrance of the gate and wept. As he went, he said, My son Absalom. My son, my son Absalom. I wish I had died instead of you. Absalom. My son, my son. 2 Corinthians 11 I hope you will put up with me in a little foolish bragging. Yes, please put up with me. My jealousy for you comes from God himself. I promised to give you to only one husband. That husband is Christ. I wanted to be able to give you to him as if you were a pure virgin. But Eve's mind was tricked by the snake's clever lies. And here's what I'm afraid of. Your minds will also somehow be led astray. They will be led away from your true and pure love for Christ. Suppose someone comes to you and preaches about a Jesus different from the Jesus we preached about. Or suppose you receive a spirit different from the spirit you received before. Or suppose you receive a different message of good news. Suppose it was different from the one you accepted earlier. You put up with those kinds of things easily enough. I don't think I'm in any way less important than those super apostles. It's true that I haven't been trained as a speaker. But I do have knowledge. I've made that very clear to you in every way. I preached God's good news to you free of charge. When I did that, I was putting myself down in order to lift you up. Was this a sin? I received help from other churches so I could serve you. This was almost like robbing them. When I was with you and needed something, I didn't cause you any expense. The believers who came from Macedonia gave me what I needed. I haven't caused you any expense at all. And I won't ever do it. I'm sure that the truth of Christ is in me. And I'm just as sure that nobody in Achaia will keep me from bragging. Why? 
Because I don't love you? No. God knows I do. And I will keep on doing what I'm doing. That will stop those who claim they have things to brag about. They think they have a chance to be considered equal with us. People like that are false apostles. They are workers who tell lies. They only pretend to be apostles of Christ. That comes as no surprise. Even Satan himself pretends to be an angel of light. So it doesn't surprise us that Satan's servants also pretend to be serving God. They will finally get exactly what they deserve. I will say it again. Don't let anyone think I'm a fool. But if you do, put up with me just as you would put up with a fool. Then I can do a little bragging. When I brag about myself like this, I'm not talking the way the Lord would. I'm talking like a fool. Many are bragging the way the people of the world do. So I will brag like that too. You are so wise. You gladly put up with fools. In fact, you even put up with anyone who makes you a slave or uses you. You put up with those who take advantage of you. You put up with those who claim to be better than you. You put up with those who slap you in the face. I'm ashamed to have to say that I was too weak for that. Whatever anyone else dares to brag about, I also dare to brag about. I'm speaking like a fool. Are they Hebrews? So am I do they belong to the people of Israel? So do I are they Abraham's children? So am I are they serving Christ? I am serving him even more. I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I have worked much harder. I have been in prison more often. I have suffered terrible beatings. Again and again I almost died. Five times the Jews gave me thirty-nine strokes with a whip. Three times I was beaten with sticks. Once they tried to kill me by throwing stones at me. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have had to keep on the move. I have been in danger from rivers. I have been in danger from robbers. I have been in danger from my fellow Jews and in danger from Gentiles. I have been in danger in the city, in the country, and at sea. I have been in danger from people who pretended they were believers. I have worked very hard. Often I have gone without sleep. I have been hungry and thirsty. Often I have gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, every day I am concerned about all the churches. It is a very heavy load. If anyone is weak, I feel weak. If anyone is led into sin, I burn on the inside. If I have to brag, I will brag about the things that show how weak I am. I am not lying. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus knows this. May God be praised forever. In Damascus the governor who served under King Aretas had their city guarded. He wanted to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall. So I escaped from the governor. Ezekiel chapter 25. A message from the Lord came to me. The Lord said, Son of man, turn your attention to the Ammonites. Prophesy against them. Tell them, listen to the message of the Lord and King. He says, you laughed when my temple was made unclean. You also laughed when the land of Israel was completely destroyed. You mocked the people of Judah when they were taken away as prisoners. So I am going to hand you over to the people of the east. They will set up their tents in your land. They will camp among you. They will eat your fruit. They will drink your milk. I will turn the city of Rabbah into grasslands for camels. Ammon will become a resting place for sheep. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The Lord and King says, you clapped your hands. You stamped your feet. 
Deep down inside, you hated the land of Israel. You were glad because of what happened to it. So I will reach out my powerful hand against you. I will give you and everything you have to the nations. I will bring you to an end among the nations. I will destroy you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The Lord and King says, Moab and Edom said, Look, Judah has become like all the other nations. So I will let Moab's enemies attack its lower hills. They will begin at the border towns. Those towns include Beth Jeshemoth, Balmian and Kiriathame. They are the glory of that land. I will hand Moab over to the people of the east. I will also give the Ammonites to them. And the Ammonites will no longer be remembered among the nations. I will punish Moab. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The Lord and King says, Edom got even with Judah. That made Edom very guilty. The Lord continues, I will reach out my hand against Edom. I will kill its people and their animals. I will completely destroy it. They will be killed by swords from Teman all the way to Dedan. I will use my people Israel to pay Edom back. They will punish Edom because my anger against it is great. They will know how I pay back my enemies, announces the Lord and King. The Lord and King says, deep down inside them, the Philistines hated Judah. So the Philistines tried to get even with them. They had been Judah's enemies for many years. So they tried to destroy them. The Lord continues, I am about to reach out my hand against the Philistines. I will wipe out the Carithites. I will destroy those who remain along the coast. You can be sure that I will pay them back. I will punish them because my anger against them is great. When I pay them back, they will know that I am the Lord. Psalm chapter 73 A Psalm of Asaph God is truly good to Israel. He is good to those who have pure hearts. But my feet had almost slipped. I had almost tripped and fallen. I saw that proud and sinful people were doing well. And I began to long for what they had. They don't have any troubles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They don't have the problems most people have. They don't suffer as other people do. Their pride is like a necklace. They put on meanness as if it were their clothes. Many sins come out of their hard and stubborn hearts. There is no limit to the evil things they can think up. They laugh at others and speak words of hatred. They are proud. They warn others about the harm they can do to them. They brag as if they owned heaven itself. They talk as if they controlled the earth. So people listen to them. They lap up their words like water. They say, how would God know what we're doing? Does the Most High God know anything? Here is what sinful people are like. They don't have a care in the world. They keep getting richer and richer. It seems as if I have kept my heart pure for no reason. It didn't do me any good to wash my hands to show that I wasn't guilty of doing anything wrong. Day after day I've been in pain. God has punished me in a new way every morning. What if I had talked like that? Then I wouldn't have been faithful to God's children. I tried to understand it all. But it was more than I could handle. It troubled me until I entered God's temple. Then I understood what will finally happen to bad people. God, I'm sure you will make them slip and fall. You will throw them down and destroy them. It will happen very suddenly. A terrible death will take them away completely. A dream goes away when a person wakes up. Lord, it will be like that when you rise up. It will be as if those people were only a dream. At one time my heart was sad and my spirit was bitter. I didn't have any sense. I didn't know anything. I acted like a wild animal toward you. But I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You give me wise advice to guide me. 
and when I die, you will take me away into the glory of heaven. I don't have anyone in heaven but you. I don't want anything on earth besides you. My body and my heart may grow weak. God, you give strength to my heart. You are everything I will ever need. Those who don't want anything to do with you will die. You destroy all those who aren't faithful to you. But I am close to you. And that's good. Lord and King, I have made you my place of safety. I will talk about everything you have done.